first point, what exactly are all those people who aren't thinking the same way as me saying? You said that there's a bunch of them and a bunch of groups, but you never said what they're saying precisely. Well, I'm, I think our chair would rule me out of order if I proceed no, you're to, fine. to read out what they're all saying. But in general, they say What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we'll be back again with a new video, guys. I have a new video on my list. So you're going to be reacting to a scene or make a fool of herself. So let's check this out. You guys, is actually confronting Peterson. So this is a highly anticipated video. So let's go right into it. Thank you, uh, Senator Ahmedvar. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you both of you for being here. Um, I was trying to take notes, but I think I got this right, Mr. Peterson, that you talked about this bill as being an expression of the vanguard of ideology. Am I, am I right in thinking? In, in well, I was thinking more about the policies that surrounded it, but, but yeah. yes. Yeah. So I'm trying to square what you, as a party of one, are saying with uh, published documents from the Canadian Psychological Association, the American Psychological Association, the M Canadian Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, the Canadian Psychiatric Association, and the United Nations Human Rights uh, Experts. So these are all you know, these are not parties of one. They are associated. They are all, I imagine, lots of psychologists are members of the Canadian Psychology Association and the Canadian Psychiatry. So how are we to square what you're saying, which is your opinion, uh, which you are absolutely entitled to, with what everyone is saying, plus the feelings and testimonies of the people who have suffered uh, over 30 years, we've been taking issues to court. These are people who, be, who, li who we've listened to. So how are we to square this? Okay, well, with regards to your second point, if the people that you're listening to aren't randomly selected from a population, then their opinions are worthless from the perspective of, of testimony because you don't know if you're dealing with a biased sample. And that's a big problem with the public consultation process that underlied this bill. And, and you can not appreciate that if you'd like, but it's standard practice in any in any polling institution or any body that's attempting to extract a genuine opinion out of a so-called community of people. And if that isn't followed, then you can't tell if the information that you're, that you're receiving is biased. And this, with regards to your first point, what exactly are all those people who aren't thinking the same way as me say? You said that there's a bunch of them and a bunch of groups, but you never said what they're saying precisely. Well, I'm, I think our chair would rule me out of order if I proceed. No, you're fine to read out what they're all saying, but in general, they say they oppose discrimination and harassment because of gender identity and gender expression. And then there's three pages, which I can share with you. I oppose discrimination against gender identity and gender expression. That's not the point. The point is the specifics of the legislation that surrounds it and the insistence that people will have to, be, have to use compelled speech. Mm. That's what I'm objecting to. I've dealt with all sorts of people in my life, very people who don't fit in in all sorts of different ways. I'm not a discriminatory person. There's 500 hours of my teaching to my classrooms on tape on YouTube and nobody's found a smoking pistol. I'm not a discriminatory individual, but I think this legislation is reprehensible and I do not believe mm. for a moment that it will do what it intends to do. I also don't think that my opinion deviates substantially from the bodies that you're describing because you haven't provided any evidence that they say anything other than discrimination is a bad thing. Mm. I think that unreasonable discrimination is a bad thing and it's unreasonable when people are judged for any reason other than the specific competence that they bring to say a given position. It's not in anyone's best interest that that occurs. But I don't think that you've demonstrated in the least that the opinions that I'm putting forward are exist in opposition to the standard practices, of, say, of my particular discipline. Hmm. So, Could you, may I follow? Mm -hmm. Could you repeat one more time your response to Senators Gold and Pratt that the Ontario Human Rights Commission has provided what I would say reasonable alternatives uh, to your, your uh, objection to using pronouns? Well, I, I think it's been made clear in the, in the presentation so far is that it depends on which part of the Ontario Human Rights Commission's policies you read. And that's a big problem. I mean, that's that, one of the reasons I criticized this to begin with was because when I went through the policies, I could see that they're absolutely incoherent. So, hmm. for example, here, let me give you another example. So there's an insistence in the Ontario Human Rights Commission that 
sexual preference is an immutable phenomena, which indicates, at least in principle, that it's biologically grounded. But on the same, by the same token, in exactly the same policies, they presume that sexual identity, gender identity, and gender expression are entirely independent. It's like, sorry, guys, you can't have both of those because one's A and one's not A, and you can't put those together. And like, there's, there's endless numbers of places in the policy uh, surround, surrounding Bill C-16 that are characterized by that kind of logical incoherency. And I mean, what's it going to do to people who are transgender, who are making the claim that they were, say, born that way at birth, which is a strong claim. That's mm. a biological claim. It indicates that there's a direct causal connection between some biological phenomena and the expression of a particular identity. It's actually the strongest defense that people who have, let's call them non-standard sexual identities or gender identities, have to defend okay. their claims. So I have to wrap it up there and move on to uh, Senator Boivin. Okay. Then she actually made fool of herself. She really made fool of herself. You got a question? She asked. She was not asking a question. She was trying to get at Peterson. But the question has no meaning. You said he 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 did something very terrible about again gender identity. Um, people who are gender identity, he he's against them. He said some have hurtful words. You could not state one out. She did not make any points why asking <laughs> Peterson any question because her point is no point. She had no question. She just made a fool of herself. Peterson stands strong. He said, "I have." Been in different interviews, I have said this a couple of times. You said I'm against gender identity. What's in the gender identity? What did I say that's wrong about the gender identity? Give me something so I'll be able to defend myself that this is what I said. She could not make she could not make any statement. She have nothing. Like Peterson is a very knowledgeable man. You you are coming to ask if someone who is very knowledgeable about his gender identity. About LGBTQ plus, about he's also a lecturer. He has five hundred hours, according to him, of his teachings on YouTube. He have never used any abusive words against people who are gender look for their gender identity. He he said, "I'm clean. You have no proof of what if I did something wrong. You have no proof. You have nothing right there. You just ask the question that has no points to Peterson himself." According to the lady, she says she had three pages. Make one example. So Peterson will be like, okay, I said this. This was what I mean. She just said he's against gender identity. Like, anyone can be against gender identity. So what the hell are you saying, woman? It's it's very hilarious. And you know who Peterson is? He's very knowledgeable. He's a very smart man. She actually just came there unprepared. Because that is a sign of someone who is unprepared. Being a senator, you just made a fool of yourself. It's as simple as that. And I love how Peterson was very coordinated. And it takes the time to listen to her question properly. I said, yes, she's actually making no sense. Because she said nothing wrong that I did. Comment down below, think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video with as many as you can. I just want a bag. Like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater Baby mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore Buku bitches in my bed I got scales all